Hello. Today is September 26, 2017, and we are deep in the process of ascension people. Oh, yes, we are. We're experiencing amazing things, or some of us just may be experiencing feeling tired or maybe experiencing nothing. Regardless, every human being on earth, on the surface of earth, is being exposed right now and showered with a new level and a new intensity of cosmic rays like never before. We're going to get into that later with Sandra. Why? Because of our position in the solar system, because of this exact time that was already written, because of the contracts we've had, and because of our choice that we made to be here at this time. As you all know, every single one of us is playing a role. We have first waivers, second waivers, and you know what? It's all good. It will all catch up at some point, so no need to worry where you fit in this hierarchy, because guess what? There is no hierarchy. It's just a giant wave. People are just at different parts of the wave. So don't worry. Earth is ascending, and we are on the ride, literally. Two years ago, or about two years ago, I wrote several books on the cosmic rays known as the Golden Christed Ray, the Platinum Ray, the Magenta Ray, the Purple and Gold Ray, and the Rainbow Ray. At the time, I wasn't sure what it meant, um, but now I am seeing how it is all fitting in, as many of you guys are seeing how it's all fitting together as well and your part. These rays that are coming in and now in full force are a full spectrum of cosmic rays hitting Earth. And I know that we have been calling these for some time, and now we are going into a deeper and more precise, exact use of commanding their use for the specific highest good of which each one is intended to do. There are other rays in this. And there are many of them. There's just like I say, it's the full spectrum. These are the five that I've been known to work with. So some of you are known as keepers of the platinum ray or keepers of the rays. And you may be having a stirring in your heart and your soul to do some work, to get on the land and to work directly with these rays. And you know who you are. Um, But the point is, we all have these freaky jobs. (laughs) We all have these freak jobs. I mean, you may not know what yours is, but your signature is bringing something so highly specialized and unique to this giant orchestra of ascension, whether you're aware of it or not. But there is, no doubt, a light army of many quietly doing profound things. I salute you all. So one of the most fascinating jobs to me, besides the one that I get to do, Keeper of the Rays, um, just one of them, is the job of the gatekeepers. And so to me, that is just totally mysterious. So if you are one, you know it, probably. And many of you have probably been drawn to the work of Sandra Walter, and many of you probably taken her course, The Ascension Path, which we're going to talk about and recommend if you haven't. So she has this unique role in that she literally opens these different gateways for the planet to help ascend. She's been doing it for years. She is really deep into it. She gets her dates a year ahead of time of what gates to be working with. This is like a PhD in this kind of work that is so specific, so exact, so detailed, so complex, and so fully fleshed out. It's amazing. So if it's unfamiliar to you, we're going to find out more about it today. So I would like to, at this point, introduce Sandra, but before I do, I would like to tell her that her work is incredible, and she's been in Sedona for two weeks, and I've got a new relationship, even deeper with her, about the work that she does, which is allowing me to be here and share with her today. And another thing that she does that I find that is so incredibly important right now is she created the Unity Meditation maybe a year ago. And it, I don't know, maybe it's got a hundred thousand views or way more, maybe 200, I think 200,000 views. I mean, it's just like, it is a 30 minute meditation done <clears throat> three times a day on Sundays that is helping the planet. And if you have any kind of galactic connection, you're getting the instructions. Hey, people meditate in groups, gather with your tribe. It can be five people, 500, it doesn't matter. But I like just getting on board with her meditations because they're palpable. When you sit in that meditation, 
three times a day on Sundays, you feel it. I've had the most sparkliest meditation I've ever had last Sunday listening to one of those because it's all of our energy combined. That's the magic. We are moving into the we are presence here. And that is all of us working like just like a giant, humming, beautiful, well-oiled machine, bringing these rays in and landing them so they can do what they're here to do. So I think I'll say hello to Sandra. Hi. Blessing, sister. It's so great to have you here today. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. And it's been great to have you in Sedona. It's a different place when you're here. Wow, thank you. It really is. It's wow. kind of like, well, we'll go into all the reasons as part of what I've learned since you've been here and what I've been quickened into since you've been here. But I just want to say thank you for what you do, and, I, and I'm glad you're here on the show today. Thank you. Wow, what an honor. Thank you. And you're welcome. So mm-hmm. one of the things I want to do is um, I want to expose a mystery. I know that there's a lot of people that you work closely with around the country that do the kind of work you do. There are others that kind of get it that are grid workers. And then there are those that have had the the unique experience of doing it with you. And so let me just say, Sandra does all this work alone. She lives on, okay, I am just had to go there. She lives on Mount Shasta <laughs> year round, mostly outside in a tent. I can't even spend one night alone in the woods. I would be so afraid. (laughs) Anyway, she's out there with Bigfoot, and she's out there with the elements doing this work, super connected to the earth, working with this massive portal known as Shasta. And she's kind of on her own doing this. So when she opens gates, it's her and all of the forces that work with her that that she commands. So to be a part of a gatekeeping ceremony with her is a a huge privilege. I got to be a part of one, and I'm going to... Tell you what I felt from a 3D point of view and a 5D, and then Sandra's going to tell us what she was seeing. And I think this will be so incredibly insightful for all of us. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. What was your experience? Well, it was a very loose invitation after your talk at Sedona Creative Life Center. You said, okay, I'm going to be on. It was like those that had ears to hear heard the invitation that we got to join you. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so there on the equinox that night and it was during the day, and we said, what time? Because those of us that wanted to be there kind of pinned Sandra down for a time. She said, sunset. So, of course, I was just like waiting for that moment. The day comes. I go up. It's halfway up Cathedral Rock, which is a very sacred site. And I get up there, and I can already feel the air. There's a giant flat rock with a huge circle painted on it. Somehow that disappeared. And then this beautiful mandala in the middle that Sandra has created with the Vesica Pisces with all of her super amazing crystals with feathers and flowers. So it was like every dimension of of mandala, like from the religion of the Ascended Masters with the flower petals, the Galactics with the crystals, the Vesica Pisces. So it was like this begins the concept of the merging of the dimensions and the timelines, which is what I got to experience in a different and new way. So... Very quietly, she gathers, there's seven women, and then later some others came. It was a seven or eight, it was seven. She gathers in a circle, and she, she says that all the, all the uh, giants want to hear the drums, or all the yeah, guardians the want to hear the drums. So she was, yeah. she was drumming, we had sage going, and it was just very quiet. Everyone was totally quiet. No one said a word. They just followed along. She did her invocations. She did her decree. She did her. She was just really calling in the energy and opening up all the directions, the north and the south, the above and below. And we we're all feeling this. And when she went into, as she created this portal, I actually saw above my head in my mind's eye a series of gates opening. It was like rings that were stacked on top of each other in, in a descending order of size going straight up. And I also just had the physical being of feeling of being in Egypt, being in the Native American land, being in the Rose Cathedral. I mean, the Rose, the, uh, what's the, the, the chapel, the Rose Leyline Chapel mm. in Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll think of that name in a minute. But they all merged together. And I actually felt like I was connected to the rose line, which wraps around the earth as a kundalini thing. Felt all those things merge. Mayan temple, Teotihuacan. So at that point, I just fractaled out and just enjoyed the experience of where she took us and was just there and present with these beautiful other priestesses working on this. 
So I'm not going to go any further because let's hear from Sandra herself your version of that. Sure. Well, we were, it was uh, sunset, new moon right before equinox. We were opening for the equinox because it was three days prior. And the, the experience of gatekeeping for me is a very present activity. So it's something that happens in the now moment, in absolute zero point, you show up, you're not exactly sure what's going to happen. There are invocations and commands that you can use and crystals that like to come, but we're very flexible about what is needed in that now moment. And the thing about the ascension process right now is so many of us are getting into that absolute zero point awareness where it's so now that past, present, future are collapsing into that oneness. Now we've been cultivating that landscape within us and now we're kind of sharing the landscape that's been built with everyone else. So when you when you cultivate that activity within and then you show up, you become that pure conduit for whatever it is that source, higher levels want to do or have to do in that now moment. And with the gateway opening, it is multidimensional. So it, and especially when you're dealing with primary timelines of ascension, like we are right now, the Christed timelines don't feel like timelines because there's actually a, a collapse of time dynamics in order to get into that, into the resonance of uh, the vibrational match to have that experience. So it's a very now, very present experience. And that is what actually opens the gateways is that zero point thing that's within you that's affecting your dna that's affecting the time dynamics the fields of a certain location but then you start merging with all the other gateways around the planet and that was part of the invocations was connecting with the crystal beds connecting with the the core of gaia connecting with the crystalline grid connecting with every other sacred site every other crystal that's been placed by a light worker all of those things so when you have that experience of I saw Egypt and I saw the rose line and I saw the future and I saw the past and everything. It's like literally you're collapsing the the experience, a linear experience into that oneness when you open a gateway in that, in that way. And that's why people can show up in any walk of life or any life path that they, they've been experiencing and maybe you haven't seen them like a lot of the people from the Sedona gathering, I have I looked around the room and I'm like, I haven't seen that person in 10,000 years of linear time. And yet we look into each other's eyes and it's instant. You're instantly right back there with that sister or brother, understanding, sharing. You can feel it. Your DNA is starting to go, hello, hello, you know, and you're bouncing off of each other and exchanging all these codes. And that's what happens in gate work. So it's beautiful. That was the second time that I've done gate work with other people present and it's been a very palpable experience so for me I'm learning to through the event in Sedona and with that gate opening that um, we are indeed ready to start sharing that experience instead of always being alone you know there's there was a certain amount of mm, not pressure but guidance to make sure that certain things happen you know, a lot of a lot of the preparation for these gateways and big events like the eclipse or the equinox or whatever, there's still that, um, like you were talking about, urgency of this this has to happen in order for other things to have, have to happen. You know, it's like domino effect of getting into this zero point dynamic. And then it gets the complexity aspect of it is more and more, the, more of those dominoes get closer and closer together until it's just simultaneous. And then you start experiencing simultaneous time, a lot of dimensions merging into one, and a lot of different uh, past, present, future at the same time. It's not that it goes away, it's just that it, it becomes a very simultaneous present experience. And that's what we were vibing with during the gateway opening. Will you say that basically what opens the gate is your vibration? It, it has to do with uh, the resonance within your DNA itself. So there's oh. DNA encodements. Like a gatekeeper is actually carrying codes within the DNA because everything, all of our dimensional experiences and experiences, especially in form, they're all DNA-based. 
So you're when you're not just activating your DNA, but there's galactic encodements that come in when you're awakening. If you embrace them, they're like, okay, now you get more, now you get more. And if you go through a conscious ascension process where you're consistently saying, DNA light up, you know, activate, rebundle, etherically reconnect, and consistently doing that several times a day, sometimes, you know, it depends on, on what's happening. But when you're welcoming that forth, then you're, and if you're someone who's dedicated to grid work or gate work, and you're somebody who, when you get the intuition or the guidance to go somewhere, you actually do it and don't doubt, you know, you're in that state of no doubt, surrender, you know, to the, the higher mission, then your DNA can interact with the planet in a different way. Actually interacting with the holographic projection of realities through your DNA. So that's how you're able to transcend dimensional levels or create the experience of simultaneous awareness of the multidimensionality of the self, merging with the higher self, merging with several layers of the higher self, galactic self, I am present. So the DNA is the nexus. The DNA is the key. The key. So does that mean that... Um, being in the physical presence of other people is super important yeah. for certain um, DNA unfoldment mm -hmm. or activation. So can yeah. two people together activate each other's DNA? Absolutely. And that's what was happening during the event. That's why we, we talked about, I'm, I'm sure I talked about um, the eye gaze, you know, that us blocking eyes, we're going to be exchanging DNA codes, you know, whatever you need. I'm like, everybody make sure that you're locking eyes. And I saw everybody beaming at me, you know, during the event and everything. And granted, I'm standing up in front of everyone and speaking, but I noticed other people looking at each other and everything and making sure that those codes, you know, their higher self is like knocking, going, look at that person, look at that person, lock eyes with that person, you know, and it is, um, it's also a heart-based activity. So if your heart is open, you're actually opening unlocking the dna to do what it's supposed to do so that's why you know sometimes you'll lock eyes with somebody and there's no light on you know there's nothing there so it is a stage of the awakening process but i was told last year that it's very important for all of us to make sure that we're getting in the proximity of other people and to your the level of comfort that you're okay with to get around other people that there's going to be a lot of DNA code exchanges going on. So it's not like you have to go to a huge event. It's just make sure that you're not, you know, this, this process can make you feel isolated or maybe you don't feel like communicating with people, but I go to ecstatic dance to do that. And it's just a matter of being in the proximity of other beings. You know, I don't like to uh, socialize or talk very often. So when I'm in that mood, I just go to ecstatic dance and that's when the code exchange happens. But you have to be in the proximity of other people who are also awake. It's amazing how much time you spend alone and quiet. Like 80% of your winters are spent alone and quiet. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I want to go back to this whole thing. So the DNA um, engages with other people. So that's my argument for creating gatherings. And I think mm -hmm. gatherings mm -hmm. is part of the 5D hyper accelerator technology. So I think that if we can engineer, like if you engineered more gatekeeper, invited other people, mm -hmm. that's like super high level hyper acceleration yeah. for those attending. Or like the Conscious Media Festival, that's like a like tribe of a light tribe of everyone getting together. And it's like we all know each other online, but the magic happens when we're all in that room together on that opening night of the galactic ball and so much sparkage yeah. happens. Yeah. So I like this aspect of ascension, the DNA. I just hadn't put it into the, those, those exact words, that it's the DNA that's yeah. intermingling. Right, and the ability to be present. The, uh, we were talking earlier about the distraction thing, but there is, there is definitely mm, there's something that I want to express is like the experience, this new experience. This is just happening this year. We've had glimpses of being, uh, oh, I feel really present, and then you would you know, kind of vibe out of it or, oh, I was really present, so I'm good for today. You know, I was present over then or over in that moment or during that activity and now I need to like kind of decompress or whatever. We're not, we're not doing that anymore. 
So now it's this consistent ding, 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 you know, where you're consistently in this zero point dynamic and it's, there's like a blocking mechanism. All of a sudden you lock into it. And because of the cosmic factors as well, you know, this Trinity Stargate convergence during the eclipse, which was huge. And everyone was like, I'm not really sure what happened during the eclipse, but I'm changed forever. You know, all of a sudden we had this return of this divine energy. And then it gets amplified again during the alignment that we had just a couple days ago over this gateway weekend that we just encountered. And it gets stronger and stronger. And they had always, my guidance team had always said that it was when the way showers were able to fully embody that, where you actually feel it and it becomes your lifestyle to, to actually be in that state and that it would be unwavering and that that would anchor this through this human heart grid and then it's a quantum effect. You know, everybody that you come in contact with or even during the unity meditations when we're surging it out into the field and somebody decides, oh, Sunday, maybe I'm going to try that and they tap in, they're receiving that activation. They're receiving that amplification. And of course, it's up to the individual what they want to do with that. But for people who have made it their service to source, to the planet, to humanity, kingdoms, elementals, and everything to take on this level of consciousness, it is becoming overwhelmingly palpable and very difficult to describe because people will kind of, if you're not in that state, people will go, oh yeah, the now, you know, as if it's like a catchphrase or something or an unattainable goal. It's like, I'll be in the now when, when I get there, you know, kind of thing. But now that it's happening to so many way showers, and now that these cosmic factors have come into play, we talked about that in the Sedona event, all these different stargates and the cosmic factors that were affecting our ascension and everything right now. It's this beautiful, uh, perfect storm of factors that is now fully supporting us to just be that, be that multidimensional self with the awareness of the higher self, the awareness of the team, the awareness of this is what you have to do now. This is, this is, you know, the constant intuition is so amazing to me that even the event itself, I came out of unity meditations on a Sunday, Monday morning. Okay, we're going to the Creative Life Center. We're going to see if there's a room available because people had asked for a gathering, but I had, I had no intention of doing anything formal. And you show up to the Creative Life Center and they have this beautiful room. And five days, four days later, we're actually getting together. There's 55 people in a room all beaming and exchanging codes and being so present and doing the unity meditation. You know, we beamed everybody from Sedona during that activity. It was beautiful. But because we've cultivated this, this landscape within then it uh, and this resonance with the higher experience it's now creating that we're actually becoming creator consciousness you know that creator incarnate stage is now becoming so consistent that it's changing the reality are you seeing a huge jump in people who that you would say have embodiment or embodied it used to be a word back in the day where it was like we're all striving for the embodiment to embody our ascended masters. Mm. I think that that's kind of been erased a little bit and that people are embodied and they might be embodied, they don't, but they don't even use that word. It's like that. I don't even know that I don't even know, but I think there's many people that are embodied now. Well, it was a lot. There's a lot of dissolvement of, with this activity of bringing in this absolute presence and this absolute now and this allowing and this pure love that is that and it has a lot to do with cosmic mother aspect that divine feminine flowing into the planet now and activating all of this because we were missing that for so long that you weren't capable of holding that now experience and the non-judgment and everything and now we're fully supported to have that experience so it's beautiful but as we get into these these um higher qualities the these stories don't feel applicable anymore, or or maybe not uncomplimentary, but yeah, not applicable. You know, there's a lot that's not applicable to my journey anymore, and a lot of the the concepts and, and which a lot of the time are coping mechanisms to get us to where we 
are now of like a, a first wave or new age experience or, or belief system, just a, a outright belief system of I am an incarnation of Archangel Michael or I am an aspect of Yeshua or you know Mother Mary or Magdalena or whatever. <clears throat> um, we can see how helpful that was absolutely needed, but we're about, we're about to, you know, absolutely take off in a brand new direction. And that brand new direction is, yes, it was really helpful and everything, but there is something else. I couldn't agree more. Presenting. My experience, um, I haven't voiced this yet publicly, but my experience of the Ascended Masters has totally changed. Mm -hmm. I feel like they have ascended and now they have formed colossal beings that are spokespeople for new earth so i feel like all the lady masters the ascended lady masters have mm. become a colossal being yeah. and they have a name and they are going to speak through certain people but it's not the individual i don't call to the individual ascended masters these days i don't find myself doing that yeah. and that's kind of new mm. but i like what you said earlier about how we're like these hyper multi-dimensional selves now in awareness of the multi-dimensionality so that's the difference like we before we knew we were these hyper-dimensional beings, but now with living in the awareness. I think that's what makes the now even more delicious mm -hmm. is the awareness that you, of all those aspects all at once, yeah. being aware of that. Yeah. Um, you know, talking about the mother, the, the earth mother, the, the divine mother, mm -hmm. I wonder if that has been propelled forward by the really popularization of all the ayahuasca and the plant medicine that, that has actually connected a lot of people to mother earth mm -hmm. that that has brought in more of an earth elemental or to help this whole process do you have any thoughts on that it might be an aspect of that i th i feel that that was um important for for a while in order to kind of break through a lot of self-imposed barriers that some people had been carrying through their journey. Um, however, I'm my guidance has always been absolutely no substances. This thing is going to propel you right through that 4D realm that you see when you when you get into ayahuasca or substances, and it's going to we're actually going to break right through that. So it's like don't get enamored with the light show, <laughs> you know, don't get enamored with all the beings and everything. Very helpful, but you're going somewhere else that we were actually going to shoot uh, right past that um, realm completely. And now I can, now I totally see why. And I'm someone who has listened to, you know, Terrence McKenna and, and all, all the, um, you know, the brothers and sisters who had strong experiences with that during the whole new age movement but now it feels unapplicable to what we're experiencing i'm somebody who's you know i'm having very strong experiences and very strong visions and i've never touched any of those substances so it's um you know it's your your personal choice but there is something that's happening with our dna now that feels like there's a need for purity and divinity and you know get out of the way because this thing is going to show you something that is brand new you know brand new perfect segue because i wanted to move next into since you've been here these last two weeks and i've been hyper accelerated into some of my own personal work with ascension i noticed several things that you seem to brought, have brought to the table to remind me or to activate some things that and i just want to go over those with all of us because they're classic qualities that I think are hand in hand with ascension. And the first one was the one purity. And so we did a post at Conscious Media Festival that said, a pure heart is your access to the new earth. And I think a lot of people don't know they have a pure heart, but they do. And I think a lot of people <laughs> do. Like I've always known I've had a pure heart. Have you always known that? That there's something in there that's just. I can't say that I always knew that. No, I had, I had a very, I've had a very diverse experience. I've had the experience of having like several incarnations in this one, you know. So I burned through a lot of stuff uh, early on, um, but I always had the spirit connection. I always had the guides there, and a little out there, you know, experiences, which I embraced, and I feel that's one of the keys to my particular um, journey uh, or my life path is the acceptance of the strange. The acceptance, the no judgment. 
no judge. Well, there was judgment in the beginning. I was like, what's going on here? You know, that kind of thing. But there was a curiosity that kept me motivated to go, okay, this and more and more. And I always had that. I feel that there is actually this um, attractor, this thing that we're, that we're entering into, the project of divine human, of creator, a pure creator beingness experience while in form. And it's this, this deep, you know, the people who awakened during this time have that, that inner intuition that this thing is going to happen. It's undeniable. You just know it. You know it in your bones, in your DNA, in your whole beingness. You know that this thing is going to unfold. And when you have that and you trust it, that's when, you know, your journey can can unfold Explode. with that trajectory. You know, you do set out that trajectory. And if you keep in alignment with that trajectory, you do have a craving for a purer heart. You do have a craving for... Let, let me see what I can do. Let me show humanity what is possible. And for people who are way showers, that is the key, is you volunteer to show humanity what is possible, and you'll do anything. Well said. And I want to go back and say, when I say knowing I've had a pure heart, that is not a religious statement, mm-hmm. and nor is it saying I've had pure behavior. Totally different. Yeah. But... In my heart of hearts, I've always known what to do. And this platinum ray that I relate to is all about impeccability. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a shattering and a truth and like an Excalibur sword. That is kind of the kind of purity that I feel like I have just like it's part of my spinal cord. Yeah. Yeah. And it is that, you know, when we say divinitization and puritization, it's a total acceptance of your, your higher self. You know, we can have complete acceptance of who we are and what we're what we're doing, you know, kind of fumbling around without our eyes and our ears on and everything. And then when, when that stuff starts activating, it's a full acceptance of that higher self, a full acceptance of the multidimensional self. No matter what presents, you're like, okay, that's me. And then when you have that complete acceptance within of your own creation you know you're creating your reality we always hear that but once you have a very strong palpable sense of that that's that's when the fun begins because then you're like okay i'm in, i'm vibing with something that's much higher level than i'm used to and you keep leveling and i like up it and leveling up and participating and participating and striving and you know even when you when you feel like mm, maybe that activity or what I did, or maybe my my thoughts are straying, or why am I getting distracted, or whatever. You drop everything, and repair that, and get aligned. You know that's that's the kind of experience that I have now. It's any time you get steered off, or or something distracts, which is which is rare. I must say that's the most re- remarkable thing about my journey now is really embracing the not knowing, really embracing the now, and being whatever percent the delicious unknown yeah it's good you know um another quality that you've reminded me of or reintroduced is that simplicity matters mm-hmm. and um one of the one of the other points is talking about the this, this coincides with the disease of distraction which i feel like i'm so prone to the disease of distraction meaning mm-hmm. i i love all aspects of my being i love shopping at Tom Ford in Las Vegas. Have you ever been to that store? Oh, oh my God, it's like a temple me? of style. <laughs> I'm like, I am the least glamorous of your friends. I didn't buy anything there. But, you know, I just I embrace all aspects of my experience here. And so that does create an, an, an easy aspect to get distracted with traveling, whatever. But I like always coming back to um, knowing what is a distraction and what isn't. And I think that's where simplicity comes in. So if I'm not getting enough quiet time and simplicity time and earth time, guess what? I am really chasing after something that's pretty fun and exciting or what I think is fun and exciting. So so that whole thing about simplicity, like, like just take a week where you go to bed with the sun and get up with the sun every for a whole seven days. That will change your relationship. Quit talking so much. Sometimes I've gone back to my thing where I try to not speak until noon, Mm -hmm. which when you just hold your voice in, you just like well up with all this power inside by not speaking. We're just like leaf blowers with words all day. 
blah, 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 spraying out our power, mm-hmm. giving our power away. And our that energy. includes social media, typing your words, you know, any kind of communication. Well, I have to do you... some, I have to do that. Well, but... sometimes we have to, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, the disease of distraction. So it's just like, it's just kind of like a, it's an inquiry. It's a philosophical inquiry about your life. Like, can you remember a time when you were like really connected and you were just had so, so much simplicity to your life? Like you're eating really simply and cleanly and, and you were just reading a book and you had took that time. I like to think about those times because that's what, that's kind of a very fertile bed and condition, favorable condition for the Ascension energy right now. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, and it does get, um, you know, people have asked me, what's the, the experience, what does it feel like? And it feels very Avatar-like. Like, I'm, I'm very aware of doing this interview in this now moment, and we have a little camera set up and everything. But it's so, it's so, it, it's non, it exists and it doesn't exist at the same time. And that's the, the most difficult thing, is to try to put words to this experience because it does feel very avatar like it's like oh yes we're just playing in the hologram or you if you want to go to tom ford or whatever you'll have you know when you have that presence when you have that click in it's um i'm not saying that you won't want to do that anymore but you'll find that um you know some of the energy of the things that i used to uh stumble into or rely on like for excitement or enjoyment or whatever are changing dramatically you know it's you you start craving the 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 resonance that you had with that kind of experience of like oh i just want to see like what's new and you're like oh wait a minute i'm actually craving creation i'm creating my i'm i'm craving my own beautiful new thing you know or or even like having meals with friends, I used to enjoy that, and I don't any longer. And it's painful for, for me. It's not painful. It's just, it it's just like taking up time. And for me, like just taking up time, like my experience of time, is becoming very different and very accelerate, very accelerated. So there are other things that I'd rather be doing, and rather be creating and and actually exploring what this new. You know, I rather explore these new landscapes. And a lot of the time when you don't have folks in resonance that want to explore with you, that can't be quiet together. You know, that was one of the more remarkable things that I'll mention um, was I was actually asking for that in the New Moon Gathering. I was like, I wonder if this is a group where you can just be quiet and in the moment because that's a big part of gatekeeping is you open up and then you sit in silence and we did that we did and there was this beautiful spans of wide open presence with everyone and we were quiet and you felt like the point where people really wanted to talk they were getting a little uncomfortable and then we passed that and kind of flowed into it and I finally just had to thank everyone for sitting in silence, you know, because it is, for me, the experience of that simultaneous by yourself and, and, and prime creator. You know, it is a source thing that I'm experiencing. And yeah, Divine Mother seems to be the gateway to that experience because her energy, and when I say her, I don't mean as a being, but the background energy for all of creation from which everything is created is coming very strongly into our experience now. And when we allow that to come in, it's a very unfamiliar vibration. We've labeled it, we've called it in, we've had glimpses of it. But when it be- starts becoming your whole experience, she wants your complete attention, you know, God, source, wants our complete attention right now. And a lot of the time, you're just kind of, um, it feels like a daydream. You know, the days feel more dreamlike, which is that 4D reality, but the 5D reality is that divine flow. And sometimes it's nice to connect with people, but when you're having a very different experience, if the conversation isn't there, if the vibration isn't there, it actually feels a little. Um, it just, feels like work. Just, I say this feels does like feel work. Like work. I have it, to it does work feel to like talk efforting. to you. Yeah, it does feel like efforting. Yes, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. Um, another thing that we we've been discussing is 
with this new energy comes the the hyper awareness of of how you're using your gifts mm. and how others are using their gifts. Yeah. And I think it becomes I think everything else kind of falls away and that becomes more clear to you. Would you say that's one of the things that you're seeing as well? Well, I've been asking rather than attempting to direct the energy, I'm surrendering completely to divine will. So I'm creating spaces in, you know, first thing in the morning, I'm, I'm setting forth the energy as, you know, we, we always have. There's a, there's still that reset thing happening, um, which seems to be lightening up now, um, where the, the days are flowing together and you don't get that, like, reset where you have to call in everything at the beginning of the day, but it still feels good to do that. So I'm like, okay, I well, agree. this makes me comfortable. So, okay, I want to be as comfortable as possible, but there's definitely something else going on. And all of us are like, what is it? What is that other thing that's going on? You know, we receive all this, uh, I receive all this information on different aspects of the stargates and what they're going to do to us. And that, you know, way showers are going to be having this radically different experience. You know, this division of timelines is like, what? You know, I thought that was taken off the menu. I thought we were all going to go to this new experience and it was going to be this lovely divine ascension thing. And now it's like, well, you guys are getting a little too, your bandwidths are too uncomplimentary for each other. Where you've got this, you know, the density and then people are going to this higher, 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 higher. And the more I notice, the more that you surrender to that, and the more you surrender to divine will, the stronger and stronger that experience becomes. And for me, the new experience has always been the thing. That's the main top of my menu. That's what I want to order is what is the next experience? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Not just show me, but let me feel it. And because I've been commanding that and welcoming it in and create space for that to occur, now I look at what are what are my highest skills and what's happened with gatekeeping went to this cosmic stargate thing this year. So I'm like, okay, there's an acceleration of that. But when it comes to like my writing and my communication changing, you know, how do you put into words? Yeah, they, they keep saying, you won't be able to, you won't be able to. I'm like, so, so what do I do? You know, show me. And I, I am somebody who's still very connected to, um, you know, part of my multidimensional aspect has been that kind of cosmic shaman aspect of like really pay attention to what what's happening in the cosmos and the reflection of what's happening right before you and a lot of the things like right after equinox i came i created this this sacred portal over by courthouse butte up there alone it was beautiful it was so windy my crystals almost blew off the rock wow i mean just i was in this like chamber of this wind chamber and there was the quality of sunlight was very different equinox morning i don't know if you noticed the shift but as those gateways opened it was like something the sunlight is different now again it was like it was in the eclipse again yeah. Didn't it seem partially shaded? It still does. It yes. still feels like a, it's got a weird twilight kind of thing going on. It's different. Right from, now in this room. Yeah, it's a, it's different a different quality. So we're like, okay, and I know that we're getting into the galactic hot zone where all this these different things is purely dimensional shifting, consciousness shifting, highly encoded photonic pure stuff is coming into play and starting to thread itself through not just the gateways, but the gatekeepers and the way showers and everybody who's open to it, you let your your consciousness be open to that. And you're like, okay, I open myself as a pure conduit and boom, you're starting to get that experience. So it's in those timelines, the primary Christed timelines don't feel like timelines. It's the primary uh, aspect of them is that they don't feel like timelines. It's something that you ride into the next experience, which is why we call it a timeline at all, but it's something that we created, us, higher levels, creator levels and everything, we created it in order to actually take the universe into a next, another experience, but here in the planetary consciousness, we're playing out the story of Pista Sophia, so we've created this timeline experience, you know, timelines are just dimensional bandwidths, but this primary Christed timeline experience actually rides through different dimensions. So you're actually using it to traverse dimensions. It's this trans-dimensional thing that's happening right now. And the experience of it is very exciting because, you know, we've had all these 
different symptoms and activations and gateways and everything like that. And now it's, it's free. It's so open. And in the moment, the only other pinpoint, you know, for this year is December 23rd. And now it's just, all of this is just going to blend and accelerate, accelerate to the point that your consciousness can accept. So the more accepting you are, the more tr- this transcendental dimension can become a, a very strong part of your experience. If I might translate a little bit. So yeah. we are in for a ride of mm-hmm. complete acceleration all the way up to December 23rd. And then who knows what's going to happen then? Well, suppose, I mean, the, the experience of it or the, the intel that I've been receiving, because I'm, I'm somebody who's like, show me what it looks like. And, and there's just showing, you know, this big, big explosions of light and everything. And I'm somebody who, like other gatekeepers back in January. Like a when, solar, are you seeing one solar flash in, moment in particular? No, no. I saw, I saw that solar flash thing where it looked like the sun was exploding actually in January. And that's when you're receiving, like, what's going to unfold, you know, and everything. Um, when it comes to the the heavily predicted uh, actual solar flash, I, I see it as like a, a series that, that's actually a reflection of what's happening within the heart center of a lot of people. Wow. What's happening with DNA, what's happening with uh, these um, cosmic stargates, with the, the galaxy itself. It's like this fractal representation of what's actually happening on on a big scale and that's just where my consciousness is attempting to understand like the big 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 picture you know the more complete picture uh, that we're starting to get access to but on a personal level I'm just not carrying any of that kind of uh, timeline based this is going to happen on that moment that's going to happen in that moment we understand that there is there's definitely a pull again this this magnetic attractor or this event that's been placed on that primary timeline that we're now going to come into um, experiencing is uh, is something that I I feel and I've been shown just kind of blows away the experience of linear time. Well, but we can say escalation whether it's spherical or not of this cosmic energy coming in and transporting this whole ascension event. Yeah, and and the event itself it's like the the whole idea or concept of complexity or acceleration is just more stuff happening in a shorter period, you know. Oh, I like it's that. like a, a density when we talk about photonic density, it's just a lot more order and a lot more uh, things happening in in a more condensed uh, space. So that's your experience of time acceleration. It's just more is happening, you know. And and for me, it kind of has this implosion thing, where it's like so much happened, so much happened, and all of a sudden, it there's just this this um, mechanism that turns on, much like a gate, much like working with the cosmic stargates. It was like a big dial. Wow. You know, and you're like, okay, okay, okay. You know, I didn't even know I could do that, but you're like clicking all these different things into place. And then there's like this implosion, explosion thing. And you can see the same thing happening with the sun. It's like she, she, there's like this complexity point and then it becomes some, it births something else. The same with Gaia, the same with us. I, I see it as all fractals of the same big operation. That is beautiful, Sandra. Oh, I hope it makes sense. Yes. Good, good. That was incredible. Yeah, because the fractal thing is, you know, that is our unity consciousness. It's we understand that we're fractals of creator and that this is all one big project of, of prime creator itself, one big experience. And then you're kind of fractaling out, but then there's also, okay, you reach the edges of that fractalization. And once you're able to understand, it seems like once the, the lowest level of self is able to comprehend that it is part of this big operation then it kind of gets sucked back into multidimensionality where you're aware of the fractals in a simultaneous space so you're very aware of being on other planets or other dimensions or other experiences and had this whole formless realm thing going on earlier in the year that was really fascinating but you're getting exposed to levels of self and and that experience is not something that happened back in May. It's happening now. 
yes. you know, that awareness. You know, you, you spend linear time getting into resonance with it, and then it becomes part of your experience, your consistent experience. And that's, to me, is that experience of unity consciousness that's really stepping up right now, is that the fractals, are, all these little pinpoints, are starting to get connected. And that, is, that in itself is what ends the experience of separation, linear time. You know, it's like once you wake up to that level, you're, you're done. So all those points connect and merge. All those points connect. All of a sudden you've got these threads of light to all of your different experiences and other aspects of Creator also presenting. You know, that's the DNA lock. It's like actually connecting mm-hmm. all those pinpoints because it's like one giant, you know, 244 strand of DNA that's creating the whole universal experience. And like, you know, we talk about our own personal DNA, wow. but it, it is a fractalization of like this big generator of the universal experience. And we've been saying that, okay, the universal experience is actually complete. So it's like this trickle down effect of like, we're starting to get those messages like, yeah, this actually this universe is going to turn into something else. You know, and it used to be the conversation of like galactic reunion with like Andromeda. And it's like, yeah, okay, you guys were able, the minute that you understood that that was going to happen, yes. you were done. You yes. know, and you can feel that. You're like, oh, yeah, and then that happened, and then that happened. You can feel it like the experience of it is going to get um, so accelerated. Where it's like, yes, and you merge the galaxy, and you merge that, and you merge that, and then the universe, you know, becomes something else. Again. And you can feel it. You can feel the presence of that. Oh, yeah, we did that. Okay. And that the experience of this linear self, this lower self, uh, was was working on the same project as the higher realms the whole time. That is you know? what's so beautiful. Yeah. Like to see what you were doing when you were guided to go create a video about this, but it was actually connected to something much bigger, all this multidimensionality. I'm just going to say this. Mm. You, you've had a huge thought right there. So everyone's probably still just vibing on that super huge thought. But... I was while you were talking, I was thinking about um, another dimension is okay, blockchain technology. It's something that's being introduced on Earth as a system, and it's kind of be- based along those lines. And I was seeing a connection between that. So that is higher self working with this dimension, working with that dimension, working with the building of New Earth, working with how it happens on a universal level. Mm-hmm. Do you see that whole convergence as well? How that can just, it's all making sense. Well, even the uh, for to to my consciousness, even the conversations that you've been having having recently about um, new currencies and things like that, it feels like the to to me the second that that is presented to um, the the community, the collective, and the second that people start engaging with that, it's like done. It's like, oh, and you understood that, and you understood that, and you understood that. It's like one thing after the other. You're like, the minute that enough people, like even with the unity meditations, you can feel it. It's like you get you get enough people going, yes, I'm willing. And then the and then you're leveling up, leveling up, you know, and having bigger and bigger bigger experiences. A lot of people reporting saying, I feel like source is just like recalling the whole universal expression and like we're going to move into something else i'm like yes and because the minute that we could understand that a new earth had been created or multi-dimensionality you you were already you know the higher level of, of self you know like you said with the masters the minute people understood you could ascend into a mastery state or understood what mastery is about they went on to something else i felt that in 2012 when i got to mount shasta i'm like there were you know, all these master presences and Saint Germain ascended to the purple flame. It was all these different things and all these different belief systems. And then after December happened in 2012, they were gone. It's like, uh, I always, um, use the, the metaphor that they had, you know, left a tape recorder in a room somewhere playing (laughs) all the instruction (laughs) and you could tap into that realm and go, it's Germain is telling me this. It's like, yeah, it's the tape recorder. It feels like, they, they were like, this is, you know, and that's something that now we are learning what to do. Like, this is that the representation of 
Sandra leaving the tape recorder, playing in this reality. I know that I've moved on. That is so awesome. Yeah, but it's the same version. I'm like, oh, I get it. And the second you understand that, you can create that if you so choose. And then the lower timeline is a tape recorder in a room down the street that you can't even hear. Yeah, yeah, you just disconnect from that. And it's the it, it feels like the more, and especially as the way showers take on more and more and more understanding or embracing higher creations... It's not that the old ones were wrong. You know, a lot of people are still benefiting. You know, there's still some souls that are benefiting from resonating with those old stories or, or getting completely sure. enamored yes. with the whole conspiracy thing or whatever, you know, and that serves some consciousness. It does not serve mine any longer. So I'm moving into, you know, what what else is available? What else can we create in this realm that would assist people in understanding uh, higher levels of creation i love it i keep re- i keep rewriting new names for this podcast <laughs> <laughs> here's the latest one the urgency of now um uh, but i want to i want to kind of start wrapping up with these last qualities here and one is um one is embracing our sovereignty as mm-hmm. and you talk about it as ascension lifestyle mm-hmm. and i i like that concept because i i feel like in my mind's eye, I picture each person standing on their own sovereign cloud. And I think that is a, a great way to look at what you're sharing with the world, how you're sharing with it. Um, you know, this whole idea of who your tribe is, who you're talking to, all that kind of dissolves. And you are your unique frequency doing your thing. And it doesn't have to look any more like it used to look or how it fits in or how others saw you. I keep seeing a constant restructuring of what all that looks like yeah because the fear dynamic is dissolving so the more of us that embrace life without it you know not no longer addicted to the fear dynamic and all of its or the feedback or the validation all that stuff all the judgment and the the negative ego all that stuff that we did so much work and so much practice on it's called practice for a reason you know you practice and you practice and you practice and you build up your spiritual strength and then boom, you just blow the lid off of that reality and it's no longer applicable to you any longer. Um, As we close today, Sandra, I'm going to remind everyone to keep planting their crystals everywhere. Yeah, we do use them. You know, gatekeepers do tap into that. And a lot of people felt that when we were doing the gate work. The moment, I could feel it, the moment we said tapping into the crystal beds and every crystal placed by a light worker... You could feel everyone go, oh, you know, it's like, because you can see it, you know, it's a big mandala all around the planet. And I want to remind everyone to gather with their groups just to get like mind, um, because this, this planet is being scanned for coherence. That that probably doesn't sound right, but I feel like that's... I feel that completely. Okay, thank you. And so, so when you get with your group, you're kind of like, you're creating what I call a higher mind or a superstructure of consciousness, um, which more can be done from. So just whoever you are, get with the group, get with Sandra's meditation. And I definitely want to invite everyone to the Conscious Media Festival. Sandra was there mm-hmm. in person last year. Yeah. It, there are people that fell in love. There are people that are still hanging out. There are people that moved with each other. It was definitely a, a love, fall back in love with your tribe, find your tribe thing. We're going to do it again this year. No no matter whether Sandra is there in person, which I hope she is, um, but she has that right to decide at any moment what she wants to do, just like we all do, because guess what? Hey, we're all sovereign. All the other speakers whatever, have to sign a contract. Needs, whatever's needed, you know, that's the thing. Whatever's you needed. Stay wide open. But regardless, we will be doing a global, uh, one of the Unity Meditations on Sunday, which will be super powerful, because we'll be have all 300 of us together in the Palazzo Lavaca, all over the house on pillows, meditating, mm. doing the same meditation with the rest of the world with Sandra. So it's going to be pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, keep hyper accelerating, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Sandra, for sharing such a beautiful expression. These are things I've always wanted to know. So thank you so much. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. And if you have any last words, I'll let you sign off. Uh, just remember that as your experience collapses, as we have this time collapse, your own experience of past, present, and future just blends into the now and the more that you can tap into that it's like uh, the more that you focus on the heart 
And the more that you focus on the now, the more expansive it becomes. It's going within and letting the energy fields open up. Yeah, let that heart turn into a supernova. We need someone to write that song. And don't judge yourself along the way. Just keep just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Participate. That's the key. Participation. All right, everybody. Lots of love. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Blessings. <laughs>